And uh, the meeting is now open, and uh, or I'm calling it to order at this point. And I'd like to thank you for coming out this morning. Um, first order of business is for the Deputy Attorney General to uh, read the Open Public Meetings Act statement. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, everyone. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Pinelands Commission was given in compliance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act by providing notice to all municipal and county clerks within the Pinelands area and to the Secretary of State on December 21st, 2018, and to the Commission's officially designated newspapers on December 20th, 2018, and by posting a copy on the Commission's website. Thank you, Ms. Miles. Um, do we have um, the phone connections yet? Uh, okay. Shall we get started and then, okay. Um, Executive Director, would you please call the roll? Good morning. Not on yet, Chester. Commissioner Ashman. Commissioner Avery. Here. Commissioner Christie. Here. Commissioner Erlen. Commissioner Howell. Here. Commissioner Eirich. Here. Commissioner Janerone. Commissioner Lloyd. Here. Commissioner Lobauer. Here. Commissioner Pickaliski. Here. Commissioner Quinn. Commissioner Rowan Green. Chairman Here. Would everyone please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the uh, first order of business is the adoption of the minutes, and I'm going to split the minutes into two parts, uh, the regular minutes, and uh, we have two closed section, is that an echo? That's pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> the birds are calling. <laughs> so it didn't sound like a pine man's tree frog, but uh, you know. good morning, Candy. If you hear frogs um, or toads, um, it's from the science office, I think. Um, and as I was saying, uh, the first order of business is um, to approve the minutes, both, both the regular and the two um, closed session uh, sets of minutes. And uh, I'm going to um, first do the regular uh, meeting minutes and then part two and then come back and do part one because uh, I believe a commissioner needs to recuse himself from I'll move one the of the adoption of regular meeting minutes. Sure. And part two? If you want, I thought you wanted them separate. So. Yeah, and part two also, if that's, right. uh, yeah, let's just make sure second. that, second. Okay, yes. So the uh, second is a personnel matter and the first one is the regular minutes. Uh, are there any questions, any discussion on the um, open session minutes? Okay, hearing none. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, now for the um, last set of minutes, closed session minutes, part one, uh, which is a personnel matter. Um, would a commissioner be willing to make a motion um, to adopt those minutes? Thank you. Thank you. All in any? No, I guess there isn't any questions. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. A any abstentions? Are you, are you going to abstain from that? No. I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm. I. I yeah, the, so that I should say. Yes. The second one. Exactly. Right. Okay. And two pertain right. to the yeah. appointment. All right. That so, was my mistake. Yeah, so I'm sorry. So I'll recuse myself from the litigation matter. Which is the the motion that's up now. Okay. I, I said it was a personnel matter, and that was a mistake that I made. Okay. Um, 
Now for uh, committee chair and executive director reports. Um, before we do that, I need to uh, read uh, the minutes from the um, Policy and Implementation Committee meeting. Um, and this meeting was held on uh, May 31st, uh, and uh, the committee adopted the minutes of the March 29th, 2019 meeting. The committee approved the Rancocas Conservatory's uh, request for payment in advance of closing on a 200-acre site in Pemberton Township. Uh, closing is anticipated by June 21st. This is the last of four Pinelands Conservation Fund projects from the 2017 acquisition round. The committee recommended commission certification of Dennis Township Ordinance 2019-01, revising the boundaries of Belle Plaine and Dennisville Villages. The committee advanced Pemberton Township Ordinances 12-2019 and 13 2019 to the full commission without a recommendation due to lack of a quorum. The committee endorsed the science office's grant application to an environmental protection agency for a study of the Eastern king snake. And I learned from um, that meeting that the Eastern king snake is called the king snake because it eats all other snakes. So, pretty neat. Uh, the committee received a presentation on proposed CMP amendments for coordinated uh, permitting and public development applications. Staff presented a 10-year review of the CMP forest and rural development area clustering regulations and will provide potential CMP amendments to address specific issues at a future meeting. So that's it for the uh, PN, uh, policy and implementation meeting. Uh, so I don't believe there were any other committee meetings held uh, last month. And so now for um, uh, the executive director's report. Thank you. Um, we had um, a situation which required us to use the emergency provision in the CMP where I, in consultation with the chair, allow something to happen um, because of an emergency. This is Hamilton. They're never ending troubles with their wastewater treatment operation. As you know, Hamilton has been working hard over the years to stay out of the stream. They've been doing really well. They put on all this land application. Um, they had a, an issue with a neighbor where the neighbor um, identified a situation where some of the groundwater that they pump, because they're putting so much water in the ground, they put a trench in for to collect groundwater that may be mounding up because so much water is coming down and then they pump it up and out and it goes around and around. Well, the groundwater pump pumping was going on to an adjacent neighbor's property. The neighbor wasn't happy about it. Things went south rather quickly. They ended up in court. They desperately needed to stop doing that. They came to us with an emergency. I talked to um, Cameron Prickett about it. We agreed it was an emergency and they're just shutting off the pipe and moving it to their own property and then they'll, they'll submit an application and we'll cure it that way. So that happened, it was exciting, worked out well. Thank you, Chairman. Nancy, I just wanted to uh, mention that I think Chuck, uh, I think you mentioned meetings with Hamilton at the May meeting, and I imagine that was in reference to the overall wastewater treatment. Was that part of the discussions or? The, that was part and parcel of it. The, the, the meeting that was held by the staff was really a discussion about Hamilton's intention to to utilize the Frog Rock Golf Course uh, for some type of spray or drip irrigation as an extension of its wastewater infiltration facility. And the issue that the executive director just mentioned came up in that meeting, but the primary purpose was a, a broader discussion on whether our rules would allow uh, the Frog Rock Golf Course parcel or portions thereof to be used for an expansion of their wastewater infiltration facility. Thank you, Chuck. I just thought it was important to point out that this had been brought up at the previous meeting. We're in way too close communication with Hamilton. <laughs> um, I spoke to the Environmental Committee of the South Jersey Chamber of Commerce. I do it every couple of years. They're an interesting and good group, and that went well. Um, municipal Council meeting occurred on May 21st. Quorum happened. That was great. Um, and there was an 
a lengthy discussion at that meeting about legislation for county set for the municipal assessments to do at the county level. It has very little to do with us, but it was interesting because that was the issue that brought more mayors to the meeting, which gave them the quorum. So money talks and, 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 and so that was great. Um, there's not, nothing really for us to do about it, but it was interesting and in light of discussions that, that Susan's been bringing to you about how we're gonna sort of change the long-term economic monitoring program, it reminded me of how important the economic issues are even when they're unrelated to what we do. So that was interesting. Um, that we had the tour of the Buneboro Municipal Utility Authority plant. Um, Commissioner Eirich was there, Cricket was there. It was great. Um, it really was. Um, it was a beautiful day. It's a well-maintained plant. They're really proud of it. It was nice. It was just sort of, if you like wastewater treatment plants. Um, <laughs> if you don't, I could see maybe you wouldn't have thought it was such a great day. <laughs> if you like effective wastewater. Yeah, it was effective. And, and they're composting stuff. It was really interesting. It really was. So for those who were there, I think they also enjoyed it. Um, Did anyone drink it? Class. No, <laughs> no one did, but they held them up side by side they and they look identical. They really do. It's crystal clear, beautiful looking water. But they no didn't one have any ice that day. Um. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I, just to let you know, we are continuing with union negotiations. We had another meeting yesterday. We have another one scheduled in two weeks and we're close. So hopefully we'll almost be on time to have an agreement for the duration of a contract instead of an agreement after the contract ends. So that's excellent and that's moving along well. That's all I have. I'm sitting in a different place so now I don't know what to do. Okay, <laughs> who's next? It's the things I want to mention. Land use and technological programs. Yes. Uh, I wanted to mention to you that uh, through the NPS money we did uh, recently purchase a ground penetrating radar uh, device uh, for the cultural resource program. Uh, I think science is going to use it as well, maybe some others. Um, obviously, it's to figure out what's underground. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we're going to use it both in planning. Uh, we're going to look at some sites that we know there's things at and try to figure out where they're at on the site. Uh, and secondly, we will use it in some of the uh, development review applications uh, when we decide whether to do uh, a cultural resource survey on a property or not. So uh, it'll be interesting. It's coming next week. Uh, several staff are going to be trained in it. Uh, second thing I wanted to mention is uh, we had a, a pretty good meeting with DEP, uh, the Infrastructure Trust Bank. Um, uh, we'd ran into some problems because they're they're going uh, more method more slowly on their rulemaking and, and we needed the rulemaking to proceed because we had projects in that include water uh, transportation and, and wastewater and our rules only cover wastewater right now even though we're allowed to do the other two so we we're hopeful for, that they would move forward with regulations to get those done they believe they can handle it so we don't have to wait for the uh, the rulemaking to handle it They're talking about perhaps using a waiver which is interesting uh, to allow it and that uh, uh, so we're going to be moving ahead, and I guess later this month at PNI we'll bring the, the projects to you, propose ranking, etc., and move forward. The idea is that uh, you'll have to review them. Uh, they're okay with you. They're going to take them to public hearing, etc. And at some point we amend the plan, the infrastructure trust plan, give it back to DEP, and they take it to the legislature and, and get the appropriations for it. So that was a it was a good meeting. It took a long time. A lot of people there, but. Uh, it was good they were all engaged and they are very helpful. So that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Chuck, Director of Regulatory Programs. We, 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 you know, we know everybody first name, but we don't always know what you all do. So I think it's good to just point out, you know, what your title is. Uh, good morning, commissioners and members of the public. Just a couple things of interest to mention. Uh, on June the 11th, uh, the staff was down in Berlin Township at the request of Berlin Township officials, including the mayor, to discuss a development project in Berlin Township that had been built. Uh, the project had been built 15 years ago. Uh, in essence, what happened is one of the buildings that was proposed, they were, there were two buildings on a site to be served by on-site septic system. Somehow one of the buildings was built 2,000 square feet more than was approved. And through a combination of circumstances that came to light now when a subsequent development proposal came in. So we met with Burlington, Burlington Berlin Township officials 
in an effort to resolve the matter. Uh, I think the, the project's on its path to resolution by bringing in public sanitary sewer to serve the site and a retroactive application uh, for approval of the, of the building, the additional 2,000 square feet that occurred. Last week, we had a pre-application conference on a site in Southampton Township at the corner of uh, Route 38 and 206. Uh, it's commonly referred to as the Katona Farm. It's in an agricultural area. Uh, there's interest in, in using that uh, parcel for a soccer facility, somewhat comparable to what's happened in the Hamilton Waterford Township area. Uh, we discussed the, uh, the regulations that would be applicable to the site. And as some commissioners uh, may be aware, the, uh, the amendment to the Pinelands Protection Act uh, that allows for recreational uh, fields uh, defines it as low intensity recreation uh, which is permitted in one of our agricultural areas. I'm not certain that the application is going to go forward, but we were advised that the uh, organization has made an offer to the owner of that parcel uh, and will be filing an application if that offer is successful. On May the 20th, the staff was in Mullica Township Municipal Court. Uh, we were discussing an ongoing matter involving a commercial use occurring on a farm in Mullica Township. The township's primary concern, other than different commercial uses that are occurring, including wedding receptions, uh, was primarily from the township's perspective, a traffic issue, uh, that there were large crowds coming for uh, weddings that were being conducted. And this matter has been pending uh, with Mullica Township before the municipal court now for probably at least a year. Uh, the matter did go to the uh, Atlantic County Agricultural Board for determination about right to farm protection. Uh, the board determined that they did not have right to farm protection and directed the matter back to the municipal court. The matter continues to be, to be pending. Some initial determinations were made. Uh, it's unclear exactly at the moment how it's going to proceed, whether the property owner is going to file for permits or, or continue on with the litigation. Just one other, other matter I wanted to mention uh, we're working with Egg Harbor Township officials. Uh, Egg Harbor Township, uh, years ago, resolved an affordable housing lawsuit by subdividing a property. That subdivision located an existing mobile home park with about 129 units that are served by on-site septic system on a, on a smaller parcel than they were to begin with. It created two other parcels, one to accommodate additional affordable housing units that have not been built and another parcel uh, with unspecified use at the time. Uh, the parcels were deed restricted, both to indicate that no further development could occur on those vacant parcels until the mobile home park, the existing 129 units were tied into public sanitary sewer. That was necessary to meet our, what we refer to as our groundwater quality or septic dilution standard. Subsequently, the 40 acre vacant parcel was transferred to Egg Arbor Township it's adjacent to one of their existing recreational parks. Egg Harbor Township has filed an application with Green Acres for funding to, to develop that park. Uh, the deed restriction is creating an issue uh, about whether development can occur on that 40 acre parcel. And we're working with Egg Harbor Township officials trying to resolve that matter. That's all I had. Thank you. Um, Chief Planner, do you have? Just, I just have a... Excuse me. Yeah. Just one question. The, um, the potential development at 38 and 206, do you know who the, the um, do we know who the purchaser, potential purchaser is? I, we do not know that officially. We, we believe it to be the same organizations that are, that are operating the uh, Hamilton and the Waterford Township facility, but we don't know that officially or specifically. It was not identified to us. And how big is that track? Over a hundred acres, maybe Mrs. I think Grover. it's even bigger. Yeah, it's 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 substantial. It's a deed restriction. It is it is has been there is a, a PDC deed restriction that was filed um, thirty years ago. So it's been in place a long time. Same as the, the Tuckahoe property similarly right. had a deed right. restriction. So yeah. that well, necessarily so, yeah, not with the, le the legislative change that was made a couple years ago. Yeah. 
He's like, I'm the World Cup here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate. Are there any other questions? Did you have a question? No. Okay. I have a question. Uh, Chuck, on, on the deed restricted farm, that's in a special ag area or is it a regular ag? It's a regular agricultural production area. Now, no. under the new uh, legislated amendment to our rules, they could build a facility that looks like a soccer field or do they get to play soccer on a field that looks like a farm field or a turf <laughs> field? The latter is true. The, the, uh, the amendment to the Finance Protection Act is specifically indicated no permanent structures so that they could play soccer without permanent structures so the the same issues that we faced in tucko or hamilton faces in tucko about traffic and restrooms and and food facilities and so forth parking are all going to be dragged along to this parcel which is a busy corner i think a number of people know where it's in town night so food is on the other corner. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? For okay. Susan. Okay. I just wanted to mention Nancy and I went up to Trenton a few weeks ago now to meet with um, the acting or interim executive director of the State Planning Commission and her staff. I think we met with her entire staff, which there were three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But the, we had gotten the, the impression, and, and she confirmed that the State Planning Commission is sort of reactivating. Um, they're going to be hiring a permanent executive director if they haven't already done so, and um, borrowing some staff from other departments and agencies, and perhaps hiring some of their own as they get ready to um, work with some municipalities on what they call plan endorsements, center designation, and all of that seems to be coming back to life again. So we thought it would be a good idea to go up there, reintroduce ourselves and the commission's role in all of this and make sure things would be coordinated in the future. And it was a good meeting. Um, they, they are significantly understaffed right now and, and very busy and faced with a lot of um, deadlines and, and work to be done over the next year. So we're gonna do our best to, uh, to coordinate with them and help them where we can when it comes to um, the Pinelands municipalities that are involved with the, the plan endorsement procedure. So it was good. And we'll we'll keep that relationship up just to make sure everything goes smoothly. Any questions for Susan? It, has the state planning commission itself been reconstituted? I mean, some as I recall, some of them are designees from the departments, but I right. think they're public members as well. They are waiting for appointments of public members. And and who is the acting? Executive Melanie there? Willoughby, oh. yeah, very busy lady. Yes. She's got yeah. several other roles, yeah. and they they have um, the commission has. I think they're meeting this week or next week, so they are able to meet and do some um, some things. But they do need other members in order to, to get a lot of this work done. They're waiting. Any other questions? Thank you, Susan. Um, Stacy, Chief Legal and Legislative Affairs person. As you know, the um, a motion was filed to remand the South Jersey gas matter. Um, opposition was filed to that motion, both to the procedural issues as well as the substantive issues. The, call, the court in the last week issued an order, which I sent out to you, um, granting the commission's motion for a remand on all issues. And um, I, as I said, I sent that order out to you. So there may be, if, if the commission so desires, um, a need to go into closed session in order for your legal counsel to be able to discuss that matter with you. Thank you. Uh, communications officer, you have- um, Yes, I am here. Report. Good morning. Good morning. So we, are, uh, we have open registration for the third annual Pineland Summer Short Course, which will be held in downtown Hamilton on July 18th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, you have before you the registration brochures. All commissioners are welcome to attend for free. We're hoping you will join us. Uh, there are brochures as well in the lobby for the public if they would like them. We also have online registration. This year we have seven field trips and nine classroom presentations. One of those field trips we were able to secure again is the excellent uh, tour of Atlantic Blueberry Farm. It's Paul Galetta's uh, tour, former commissioner, very good. Um, 
And so we're hoping to have a big turnout for that. If anyone has any questions, just let me know. Um, meanwhile, uh, we've sent out the uh, invitations for the Pinelands orientation for newly elected officials. That'll be held here at our offices in conjunction with Pinelands Municipal Council on July 23rd. Uh, we have a lot of new officials out there this year. I know Stafford, for example, has all new officials. So we're hoping to get them to come to our event so that they can learn about how the Pinelands Protection Program works and the application process and conformance and all that good stuff. So, and commissioners are also uh, encouraged to attend as well. It's always, it's always a nice uh, recap of what the uh, commission does, uh, listening to the um, newly elected officials presentation. That's been going on now for 20 years or Probably, yeah. I've been doing it for 14, and it, uh, my predecessor did it, I think, for at least five years. So. Well, I'd like to thank you for um, organizing and coordinating the Buena Vista Village stormwater visit. I believe you did that. Yes. And uh, just say that it was a really nice trip, and it was nice to meet um, uh, Joseph Santagata, who was the MUA municipal chair, and also the uh, plant superintendent, Alan. Zorzi, uh, they really did a great job explaining the functioning of that, that beautiful site. Um, it was really very interesting. And if you have any interest in science, even though it is, does deal with waste management and, and sewage and all those things, it's interesting because it all has to do with living things, organisms breaking that material down. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. It was, it was a fun tour. It was very interesting. I learned more about wastewater than I ever thought I would. Um, I think we could all say that. So. All right, thanks. Hopefully, it was interesting. Maybe you might want to consider doing something in that area. Guaranteed. Uh, uh, Guaranteed. Hundred percent. <laughs> Tomorrow. I, I too would like to say thank you. The tour was uh, very informative, and uh, the plant was uh, in excellent condition. So thank you for arranging that. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. Any other any questions? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and anyone else, Any, anything else that needs to be brought up? Um, I didn't give you guys a chance to ask Nancy questions at the beginning, the executive director. Do you have any questions for Nancy? Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> She's not. Okay. Uh, we're finished uh, committee chair and executive director reports. Uh, now we have um, three items for commission consideration. Um, the first is a um, public development project uh, and that is approving with conditions an application for public development application number 1981-0545.013. Uh, it's a 3,709 square foot addition to an existing operations building in Hamilton Township, uh, MUA. Thank you. Commissioner Lobauer, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Christie. Any discussion? Okay. Um, okay. I understand this is a uh, a building uh, that used to be used in the sewage treatment plant, uh, which is no longer um, being used in that building. Going to use it for another purpose. Uh, so, uh, if there's any other questions, I ask for commissioners if they have a motion to. You did. Uh, that's right. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, two other items for um, commission consideration have to do with planning matters and have to do with ordinances. The first of which is uh, Denison Township issuing an order to certify ordinance 2019-01, amending chapter 185, zoning of the code of Dennis Township. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Pickleski. Um, any discussion? Okay, uh, this item came before the PNI meeting and uh, we, we did discuss this thoroughly. Um, so if there's any other questions, ask, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, next item um, is an issue to order 
uh, to certify Pemberton Township Ordinance 12-2019, uh, adopting the Rowan College at Burlington County Redevelopment Plan and Ordinance 13-2019, uh, adopting the former uh, Burlington County Minimum Security Corrections and Work Release Center uh, Redevelopment Plan. I have to recuse myself from this. Okay. I work for Rowan University, which has some relationship with Rowan College of Burlington. Thank you, Commissioner Ham. Thank you, Commissioner Avery. Is there a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Christie. Thank you. Any questions? I'd just like to point out, Commissioner yes. Jack Gibson, who is the author of the uh, study that was uh, the uh, Aquaferric. Uh, Kirkwood Cohansen. And uh, it's still going on, Jack, and I think we still got some money. We're still, uh, Jack was a former assemblyman from our district who, uh, who uh, sponsored that legislation many, many months ago, I guess. You put it to good use, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. And Thank you all for your endorsement of Dennis's application. This is our mayor, Mayor Dennis Danalucci, Danalucci. Our, uh, from Dennis Township. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions on the um, second uh, matter for consider or third matter for consideration with Pepperdine? Okay, I think we have our first and our second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and we had one um, abstention left the room. Well, one recusal. Yes. Chats, if you could please get Commissioner Howell back. And just for the record, Commissioner Howell did put his recusal on the record here, but he also put a much longer recusal on the record at PNI. So, thank you. Okay, um, we have no um, public development projects or waivers of strict strict compliance um, to that where the record is not closed. So we do not have our first uh, public comment uh, period. So we're going to move on to uh, the master plans and ordinances not requiring commissioner commission action. Hamilton Township Ordinance 19-2019, Monroe Township Ordinance uh, 0, colon 12-2019, Washington Township Ordinance 2018-05, Washington Township Ordinance 2018-07, uh, just for the public's edification. Uh, other uh, resolutions that the um, commission needs to uh, consider is uh, the, uh, the resolution to authorize the executive director to continue to expend funds for fiscal year 2020 at the same level of expenditures as fiscal year 2019 until the adoption of the fiscal year state 2020 budget. Thank Second. you. Thank you. All in favor say any, any questions first? I think it's like 29, um, 2.9 million or 2.4 million uh, that would come from the state that's in the resolution. Um, so we hope. Maybe I jinxed it. Stop writing checks. Oh, well. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any abstentions? Okay, now we are opening up the meeting to the public. Uh, Paul, is there a list? Uh, I believe this would be for the development. General. No, general. general. Okay. Yeah, general public. Thank you, Paul. Okay, uh, Ms. Fishman. Good morning, Good morning. commissioners. I, my name is Tema Fishman. I'm from Medford Lakes, and I thank you for this opportunity to speak. A serious obligation to preserve, protect, and enhance the Pine Lands cries out for an equally serious consideration 
of the impact of the climate crisis on them. As the recent UN report informs us, the climate catastrophe is endangering one million plant and animal species worldwide. The Pinelands is not immune from suffering from extinction of species and irreplaceable habitat. According to a report from the Nature Conservancy, with increased temperatures and changes in precipitation, New Jersey and other states in the Northeast are projected to experience a 10 to 20% increase in the risk of forest fires. This will cause increased loss of life and severe damage to wildlife habitats and real estate. A report from the Environmental New Jersey Research and Policy Center states that more attacks from the southern pine beetle are to be expected. They quote, the return of the southern pine beetle to the pine lands provides an example of the type of events that are likely to become more common in the future of global warming. Until the New Jersey Division of Parks and Forestry discovered an infestation in 2001, no one had seen a southern pine beetle, beetle in New Jersey for more than 60 years. The southern pine beetle is extremely destructive. After attacking a tree, the beetles burrow inside and lay eggs, often killing the tree within three to four months. By 2003, more than 2,000 acres of forest in southern New Jersey, including areas in the Pinelands, had been infested. As the climate warms and the habitable range of the pine beetle moves northward, wider beetle infestations could occur. Normally, the range of the beetle would be constrained by lethal cold temperatures. The report further states that the Pineland is, is home to more than 80 species classified as endangered in New Jersey, and more than 60 species classified as threatened. These species are likely to decline in the Pinelands in response to climate change as their habitable range shifts northward out of the Pinelands region. In an article in the Press of Atlantic City written by Michelle Brunetti in February 2016, we're reminded that pines and oaks in the Pinelands absorb significant portions of carbon dioxide, a major contributor to climate change. But pests, temperature, and humidity affect that process. More pests, along with stronger storm systems, droughts, and saltwater intrusion, will increase the risk of fires. This further endangers the pine lands, its wildlife, and people. Wetlands and the life they support will be severely diminished. And then what can we expect will happen to the 17 trillion gallons of pure water that supplies the wells of people in the area in the face of these dangers? Therefore, I join with others who are asking the commissioners to amend the comprehensive management plan to include the consideration of the climate crisis and its effects on the Pinelands. The science is now clear and indisputable that this crisis is a dire threat to the Pinelands. Therefore, the importance of its effects on the present and future of this vulnerable forest must be added to the comprehensive management plan. The Pinelands Commission, I hope, will act quickly in responding to this urgent need and amend the CMP accordingly before the tipping point is reached when it will be too late to save the Pinelands. And in that vein, and in the interest of the danger of the climate crisis, I am asking you to vote in favor of voiding the approval of the South Jersey gas pipeline. And I thank you very much for consideration of these matters. Thank you, Ms. Bushman. Uh, Jonathan Peters. Good morning, commissioners. Um, Dr. Morning. Jonathan Peters from the City University of New York. Um, I've spoken before about this. Um, I just want to um, express my concern. I've been speaking with the staff about public rights of way, and I've been researching in this area for the last few years. 
And um, in particular, the new acquisition of the Katz property, there are public rights of way in that property, a number of them. And I want to assert that, uh, make sure that the Pilots Commission um, assures that the property uh, retains public access through these public rights of way. These are longstanding assets, and I'd be happy to talk to the commission or uh, present on this to you if you're interested. Um, in this case, I'm holding a, a copy of a, a right, right of a road return from 1799 that establishes some of the rights of way there in the Pinelands area. As a matter of fact, Commissioner Prickard, I, I think your family's been around for a while because in 1797, I find one of the surveyors that was actually assessing uh, these roads was actually a Prickard. So um, I'm happy to share this to you, happy to present to the commission and continue to assert that uh, these public rights of way retain public use in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peters. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to uh, make public comment? Yes, Jay. I'm going to pull your seat up. I get over right now. Back on the table. Take your time. Yep. I'm a Jay Amunyega from Franklin the Township in the Worcester County. Uh, the other uh, members of uh, the public took me a surprise by uh, being uh, very quiet uh, today. I wasn't, wasn't ready to uh, get up and run over here. <laughs> wanted to do a take of this opportunity to uh, go on the record thanking Commissioner Rabara for his long, or uh, not so long, but uh, his able to service on the commission. He uh, came here under difficult circumstances you could say that he left under the same difficult uh, circumstances. But I found that Baba was uh, one of the more committed and uh, active members of the commission, in spite of uh, the fact that he obviously had a great handicap. I. Uh, Hope that he is uh, recognized and remembered well on the commission. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Is there anyone else that would uh, like to speak? No one else from the public? Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, public comment is closed. And this is an opportunity for commissioners to respond to any public comments. Yes, yes, or in response to public comment. Oh, um, well, uh, if you'll permit me, uh, just to point out to Mrs. Fishman that uh, th there is a committee that's constituted to look into the issue of, of uh, addressing climate change and uh, seeing if we can't do something to. Uh, put language into the CMP and, uh, you know, address policy in terms of impact on CMP. So, so, so something's happening. I, I should say no more because I'm, I should defer to the chairman uh, on that one. Uh, I, I really wanted to comment about uh, uh, what uh, Commissioner Munier uh, said. Um, I, I certainly agree that we, we should recognize Commissioner Barr. And I think we're also a little behind in, in not recognizing Commissioner Galetta, who had many years... Pardon? Or Commissioner, Chila. or Commissioner Chila. That's right. So there's, there's three. Boy, somebody's going to have a. Everybody's looking at Paul. Paul's, Paul's I've like, already okay. done the Galetta one. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. all right. Okay. I guess I should just intercede for one moment. It's, the, the choice is whether we have resolutions talking nicely about commissioners when they're here, if they'll come here or yeah. not. Because yeah. it's not so easy to get commissioners to come back. Right. <laughs> Well, I, I think so that's why we've been whether whether they come back or not, I think we should certainly do it. Hopefully, they will. 
because uh, they should be recognized. Thank you, Madam Director. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I think uh, uh, Commissioner Barr will be missed. He had a lot of very important and, and thoughtful things to say. I believe he had the respect of uh, fellow commissioners and, and the public as well. And as I said, he'll be missed and uh, hopefully uh, he'll do good things in his, continue to do good, good things in his community. So, uh, uh, and we look forward to, the commissioners look forward to those resolutions so that we can recognize uh, previous commissioners that have served. Um, and Commissioner Lobauer is correct uh, about the uh, new committee. I like to refer to it as the Lucy's um, Committee because uh, it's Lucy stands it's an acronym for, um, let me see if I can get this straight, land use, climate impact, and sustainability committee. So it has to do with um, the changing climate and how it affects um, the environment, uh, both the natural world and also I believe um, um, the developed world. Um, because um, for example, um, the Rancocas Creek, you know, it floods and Rancocas Creek uh, travels uh, throughout Burlington County. Some of the towns that it travels through uh, aren't in the Pinelands, but yet the Pinelands comes to uh, a place like Willingboro and Edgewater Park. And uh, when we have a lot of flooding, uh, those those areas get get flooded. So just some of the things that hopefully this committee will, will talk about. We had, uh, it was initiated by uh, my predecessor, uh, Chairman Erlen, uh, back I believe it was in November. And we had one um, um, meeting that wasn't open to the public where we talked about what direction we might go in. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, during the week, third week in July, uh, we can have another meeting where the public can come out, hopefully in mass, and tell us you know, all your concerns. I know we all have concerns about th these issues uh, and how um, your concerns might be able to be incorporated into what the commission does. You know, whether it's the CMP or whether it's some other aspects, um, but uh, uh, climate change is affecting all of us. And uh, I, I'm glad the commission is finally going to address that. So the third week in July, hopefully um, commissioners will be available to that are on the committee um, to come out for that meeting as well as the public. Thank you. Will that be I, it will be publicized, yes. Okay, um, so let me see. Okay, well, I think the next order of business then is uh, a resolution to retire into closed session if, if needed. Uh, I think we have a litigation matter, or is it still a litigation matter? I don't think it is still a litigation matter, but okay. And we also have a personnel matter to talk about. Yeah, we do. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, okay. Uh, well, whereas the Open Public Meetings Act provides that public bodies such as the Pinelands Commission may meet in closed session to discuss any pending or anticipated uh, litigation in which the public body is or may be a party, and whereas the Commission has been an active litigant in the Sector Z Gas uh, appeals, and whereas the Commission wishes to receive an update uh, in connection with those appeals. Um, and whereas apparently um, the commission also wishes to discuss any personnel matter, and then the Open Public Meetings Act also provides um, for such personnel matters to be discussed in closed session. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved that the commission shall at this time meet in closed session to discuss both the South Jersey gas litigation matter as well as the personnel issue. Uh, the substance of the closed session shall be disclosed publicly only when it will not impede the state's ability to participate in the litigation or breach the attorney client privilege or impact the personal matter. Thank you. There we move we go into closed session. Thank you. Mark. Second. Thank you, Jerry. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs>